I had originally imagined sharing my new spinning wheel by making this beautiful shot maybe early in the morning um, spinning by the window. <laughs> um and turns out the learning curve she's a little steeper than that so i'm just excited to show it to you guys um i've managed to spin some very low quality yarn so far so this was sent to me by miss kathleen um which it was just a treasure of hers she was no longer using it and i uh, wanted to pass it on to me I've been so excited to receive this. It's absolutely gorgeous, as you can see, the Tree of Life on it. Uh, the Tree of Life is actually really meaningful to me, and this is just absolutely stunning. I did not spin this. Uh, this actually, she sent this with it, so before you guys uh, give me too much credit, I, I wish. I wish I was spinning yarn like this yet. I. Uh, I actually, right now, is such a busy time. I've got this set up up here because I've just been like playing with it. Uh, it I've had it for two days and just every little bit of time that I can, um, I've been playing with it and just getting the hang of it. Um, and I can see what people are talking about that it is a steep learning curve, but once you get it, I can I can see how it's just one of those things that's gonna like, is really gonna be about getting the feel of it down and practicing. And so my kids have been really excited. Um, we actually, for homeschool yesterday morning, we kind of talked about the history of, of textiles a little bit and just the process of what used to go into making um, articles of clothing and how people treated them with a lot more um, respect because and like they had a lot more value because of the amount of time and an effort that went into creating them and so all of my boys have requested a jacket and i've told them i would make them one probably you know like by the time they're teenagers i'm like by the time you get out of the house i'll make you a jacket from fiber that we raised so yeah I, it's really cool i'm super excited to learn how to spin i'm prepared for it to be a process but i can already see that it's something that would just be so uh therapeutic and just completely like meditative almost i really really like it and actually these arrived today more plant markers uh, miss patty actually bought these for me off my wish list and it was really funny because i told jeremiah i was like i really need to buy more plant markers i'm gonna keep working on the plants but um i gotta buy more markers and i would look around i was like where's my phone my phone is in the other room so i was just like well i'll buy them in a little bit the mail ran and these are in there i can't tell you how many times that has happened that you guys will send us gifts and it's literally the day that we are going to purchase something and it'll show up it is the coolest thing and we're so appreciative so thank you for this heading down to the greenhouse now it is definitely a muddy boot kind of day out there do y'all always shake your boots out before you stick your foot in them if i don't the amount of fear that wells up inside of me just have no idea <laughs> I posted a photo um, of it on Instagram of Gary laying in this little overgrown garden bed and people were noting the edible weeds that are all grown up in here. And we are just overrun with hen bit right now. Dandelions are starting to come up. It is, it is definitely spring. I actually purchased this the other day, a little forsythia bush. I can't decide if I wanna put this up. Um, in that bed. We're actually going to address the fact that the front of our house looks like this this year. We've actually never done any sort of landscaping out front because we we're always working on like all this other stuff but I think I may take all those weeds out of that bed and put something that I want to grow there. It is a muddy mess in this garden but look at all the life. So much. Got radishes there growing. Those will be harvestable in just a few weeks. Carrots. We moved um, all the other seedlings from inside out here. So these are all like the flowers that I started for my garden. Uh, some of them are herbs. Like you can see there's dill there and marshmallow. 
Um, there's some pink Sunday sage back there. These, of course, are nasturtiums. I'm going to pull pretty much everything here out and repot it, but I'm going to work on the tomatoes first. A lot of these, like the sweet alyssum, there are, there are multiple plants in here, and I can separate these and put them in separate pots. I've got chamomile. Look how pretty this variegated nasturtium is. That's the orange, orange troika. And the Alaskan salmon nasturtium is also variegated. So you can see, I love that. Um, I've got a couple things, like I have these Black Magic Cosmos and only one of them came up. I have more seeds for those, I need to just sow them. Here's more chamomile. I really need to probably thin these out soon. Chamomile seeds are tiny, so sowing those thickly was actually not even intentional. Over here I have my basil samplers. This is six different kinds of basil in one little six pack. And then here are my tomatoes. Now these are ones that I just started a couple of each because I'm growing those in my garden. The rest of the tomatoes in here are actually um, the ones that I'm going to sell. And I've got all of these trays down here to separate out the different ones. This morning it actually rained so hard for hours. It started at about seven. It was right after the kids got on the bus. Um, thankfully it wasn't going earlier than that, but it just became super dark and very, very, very rainy. I had kind of an unfortunate thing happen. So in the process of my little sister's wedding and getting ready to go to Iowa, I had these two trays on a new heat mat under a new kind of light using a new kind of soil and they dried out um and yeah i lost a lot of seedlings i honestly panicked a little bit when that happened because those were my shindig plants but um it turns out that i had a lot of the other varieties that i had started and so i was going to sell um, fewer plants of more varieties and uh, a couple of these were varieties that I, they're not necessarily my favorite ones, but they're ones that I like and that I know people buy like Cherokee Purple. And those all died, so I won't be selling any Cherokee Purples um, at the Shindig, which kind of stinks, but that is a more common one. People can get it elsewhere. Thankfully, the Climbing Triple Crops, which were the ones that I had saved from seeds from my own garden and the Dr. Witchies and um, like Berry's Crazy Cherry and the Black Beauty, uh, Brad's Atomic Grape, like the ones that I really, really love, uh, those were all fine. They were actually under a different light. They did not dry out. Thanks for carrying my plants out. After our little seedling drying up debacle, Jeremiah has been very diligent to help me stay on top of the plants. <laughs> I'm a helicopter plant parent. <laughs> yeah, well, we still have a lot of tomatoes, I, I would say. It is kind of interesting to think of the fact that right now in this greenhouse represents literally thousands of pounds of food. These plants are going to go to people's houses all over the place. Last year, I sold over a thousand tomato plants at the Shindig. A thousand. So I know with some heirloom tomatoes you don't get like quite the volume that you would get off of some hybrids but you do get such amazing flavor and so many different wonderful variations and you still get a lot of food. I mean even though I grow primarily um, heirlooms or kind of specialty open pollinated varieties uh, that might not necessarily be grown for like mind-blowing production. I mean, I remember at one point last year having like 10 uh, fruits on a climbing triple crop plant that were all over 12 ounces um, on one plant. And that's a lot of food on one plant. And it still produced beyond that. That was just one big cluster. And so when I think about that, when I think about several large fruits being potential out of each one of these and I look around and I think of all the gardens that these are going to go in and all the food that they're going to make it's very it's very thrilling now obviously I like that people buy started plants because I sell started plants and it has been a benefit to us over the last handful of years um, because it, it help, has helped me offset my own gardening costs by uh, making some money on my own started plants I can then help pay for basically what I'm doing for myself and honestly I still buy started plants 
even with all of this and with all of my seed collection, um, I, we have a local grocery store that sources from a local nursery. And every year I go and buy a flat of plants. Do I really need them? No, but one, it's exciting. Uh, there are always varieties that I don't have. Um, but really, I like to use my dollars to tell people what I think is important. And so for me, that's just another way to support an industry that I believe in. So I still buy started plants. Um, I'll go to farmer's markets and pick up a plant or two of something that I don't have. I will hopefully have time to walk around the shindig and uh, buy some plants from the other vendors that are going to have plants there. But with that said, if you have an opportunity to start some things from seed yourself, I do absolutely love it. I think there's something really precious about this part of the process. Um, it is something of a passion of mine, obviously, but I, I just feel like nurturing these little seedlings in this stage and really getting to enjoy the whole process of seed to harvest, uh, there's just something really special about it. For me, it's like a really faith-filled thing. Um, it just encourages me in process to to watch how this all just works. It's like, wow, this actually works. <laughs> and uh, that's encouraging to me. But it is, it is work, it is an investment, um, it is a learning curve. I've killed a lot of seedlings, still killing them uh, as of this year. Hopefully I don't kill any more this year. That would be great if I didn't kill any more seedlings this year. Yeah, it's a learning curve and you can still make mistakes, but I do think that it is just really worth it. While I said that, I literally just picked out and accidentally broke the one living seedling in the Cherokee purple thing. So yeah, there goes that hope to not kill any more seedlings. <laughs> I was trying to untangle it from the mess of dead and plucked it right out. Maybe, maybe it could live. I don't know. It's pretty, pretty rough. I'll try to poke it back down in there and see what happens. I've kept these watered, these ones that, um, a lot of the seedlings had dried up because of the fact that there could still be seeds in there that haven't germinated yet. And so maybe some of them will come up because these were for my garden too. So if the varieties completely fail, then I won't be growing them this year either. For real though, can y'all just, with the space, isn't it just so dreamy? Confession, I did a little bulb shopping the other day. I didn't buy a lot, but I bought a few. <laughs> I'm so excited about this cottage garden. And um, I was just out and I saw all the bulbs and I was like, hmm, I, I've never bought very many bulbs before because I've never had a place to put them. And now that we're doing the cottage garden, I don't know, it's just like that thing in me that I've been restraining for the last however many years. I, I just let it go. Bought some bulbs. I'll show you guys more about those whenever it comes time to put them in. So I've got a lot of germination on my poppies down there but not so much this way. I know they don't love being moved, but I may have to try to move some of those. They're, I'll have to thin them out, so we'll just see what happens. So let's talk about this hot mess right here. My uh, salad green soil bag. As you can tell, it has seen better days. Basically, this was starting to die back. Uh, the soil is probably just getting depleted because I planted this in October. The plants are all getting kind of on the bigger side. And so they're just competing with one another for resources. Uh, it's getting a lot warmer. Really what happened here more than anything was that while I was out of town, the greenhouse was getting to be like over 100 degrees and it was just too hot for lettuce. Um, and so it started dying back. I told uh, the guys while I was in uh, uh, Iowa to go ahead and move it out onto the porch. And then it got really heavy rain and it's just it was just done. However, um, one thing you can do with this setup, if you've got baby greens growing in a bag or a container somewhere that you grow over winter, uh, you can actually um, treat these as seedlings. And just like this, this is just a lettuce seedling. That's what it is. I might have picked some of these leaves and eaten it, but right here, this is just a lettuce seedling. And pulling it out just like this, I can go transplant this into my garden beds and this will continue to grow. Um, baby greens are varieties of lettuce that we just grow and harvest their leaves young. And so pretty much all of these, some of these they've put up a center stalk, they're starting to grow flowers, it's too hot for them, they're gone, they're done. But some of these might have a little bit more heat resistance, might be varieties that handle that better. 
and they they look pretty good um here's another one right here uh and and with these that look pretty good you can take them and separate them out and go plant them in a garden in another container and just give them like 12 inches all the way around uh, so that they have enough space to like stretch their roots out and get the nutrients that they need and you'll get a lot more lettuce off of these. I've done that the last two years. I've taken my greens out of my soil bag that I ate baby greens out of and I've moved them into the garden beds and just eaten lettuce off of them. Here's my other bag and it was a different mix um, and it's got a few varieties in here that I think that I could go ahead and pull these out and transplant them. And once I've salvaged the seedlings that I want to salvage out of this, I will go ahead and just dump these bags. I'll just pull the rest of it out and uh, probably put it in the compost and then dump the soil into my garden beds uh, because the soil's still good and it can be amended. Look at that little pretty lettuce there on the edge. That's a perfect perfect one to transplant. We can still get a lot of food off of that plant. Y'all see all my tulips coming up? Aren't they so pretty? They're gonna be so lovely. I, I'm not 100% sure that they're gonna blossom this year because uh, I don't know if they got cold enough for long enough, but we'll see. Well guys, I'm about to have to part ways for today. I've gotta take my kids to church tonight. It's such a beautiful day. Tomorrow, I think we may have a little bit of a break from the rain and then I think our 10 day forecast from then on out is just overcast and rain so I'm really really hoping that there's enough sun that my seedlings grow well uh, that they're large enough when it comes time to sell them it's just such a, it's growing anything is such a, a risky business because it's like well you really, you don't know what you're gonna get. You just do the best you can with what you've got. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you guys.